are five things I learned that really changed the game for me. The first thing was entrepreneurship. Be in control of your own wealth. The second one is learn to invest. That's a very, very, very important lesson. And today, investing is one of the is so easy. The third, learn to control your mind. Very important. Yes. Okay. Meditation, spirituality, and controlling your mind is also the understanding that your mind can influence Maya. Maya is the Sanskrit word for illusion. Your mind can influence the fabric of reality. Fourth situation. Okay, the fourth is intuition. Now the fifth one. The fifth one is goals. Being able to know what goals to chase, what goals to follow, and being able to accelerate the 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 quality of your goals to dream bigger. As you said, you know, out of the five things, the second thing that is said, it's very important for one to learn how to invest. Okay, I mean, it's when you talk about investing, okay, whether it's you are investing into stock market, or investing into crypto or currency, any market for that matter, we are talking about money. When you talk about trading, we are talking about how do you make money work for you. And when you're talking about money, there's one very important thing that you talk on Mind Valley is about money cushion, money emotional cushion are uh, your. I really want to talk on this today because I want my students to really, really understand that it plays a huge, huge, huge role when it comes to making money. So I want to talk on this today about money, money EQ that we have always been talking about. Uh, can you please put <coughs> some light on that, uh, Vishen? Absolutely. So, so you've all heard of money IQ, okay? So when it comes to money, when it comes to money, there are three levels, three levels that you've got to pay attention to. Right. But to, to understand these three levels, let's first talk about health. Right. When we think about health, we think about our body. Right. But our body is only one dimension of health. Right. When you go to the gym and you work out and you exercise, it's one dimension. It's the physical dimension. Right. But there's also the dimension of the mind. Mm -hmm. The mind influences your body. If you go deep into the silver method, you understand, for example, how to use your mind to slow down aging, to heal your skin, to accelerate your metabolic rate. All of these are based on the mind. But there's a third level. And the third level is what the great Indian mystics and, and teachers like Yogananda and Babaji spoke about. It is the spiritual dimension. Your health is also an influence of your ability to tap into spirit, to tap into soul. So even when we talk about health, it's not just the physical body, it is the physical body, it is the, it is the mind, the brain, the beliefs, right. and then it is the spiritual unseen dimension. Now, the same thing applies to money. Right. To truly master money, you've got to look at three different dimensions. When you talk about money, they're talking about the physical dimension. They're talking about trading. They're talking about entrepreneurship skills. They're talking about uh, your, your investment portfolio. They're talking about basic financial um, management skills. Knowing this. this is easy to learn, but if you just do that, you are not going to succeed. You have to look at the dimension of the mind. The dimension of the mind are your beliefs about money. There are about 24 in, in, in the mind, in, in Mind Valley, we have a program called um, Unlimited Abundance. And the teacher of this program says that there are 24 blocks, unique blocks that people have on abundance. A block on abundance might be. Um, Money never stays with me. Another block in abundance might be my family was never destined to be wealthy. Another block in abundance might be I am not smart enough. Right. But if you have these beliefs in your mind, you will struggle with these beliefs because well, what we believe to be true about the world right. becomes true. Right. So that's the second one. Now the third one is the spiritual element of money. And the spiritual element, so when we talk about money, by the way, we are talking about those beliefs. EQ is your emotional quotient. It is your, your emotional attachment to money. Mm -hmm. And these emotions can come from childhood. So when I was working once with, with one of our Mind Valley uh, uh, teachers, she did a regression on me. Back then I was losing a lot of money. Right. She did a regression to understand where that was coming from. 
A regression is a form of hypnotherapy where you go back in time and the childhood memory comes up. And I remember I was, it was my 10th birthday and my parents were driving me to a department store where I could pick up a birthday gift. And they thought I was asleep at the back of the car, but I wasn't asleep. And I could hear them discussing money and they were discussing it with concern. My dad worked in a department store. My mom worked as a teacher. And so they were, it was not like they were making a lot of money. I was sleeping on a mattress by the side of my parents' bed. We were living in one bedroom. And uh, um, I heard them speaking in a concerned way about money. And I felt so guilty spending money at that department store for my birthday. So all I did was I picked up a book and I picked up a hockey stick that I needed for school because I played field hockey in school. And that memory... That memory put a block in my mind as a young child. Right. And that block was money comes and it slips through you. Oh, it comes and then it slips. So always protect, always preserve it. And to save it that is, is an example of an abundance block. I got rid of it later. Right. And, and, and that really helped me. Now the third aspect of money is spiritual. Now the spiritual aspect, I, I want you to have an open mind. But I have seen incredible increases in my money flow when I work on concepts that work with the spirit, some of these concepts involve ideas in karma, karmic healing, for example, right. understanding how your past lies. So uh, I believe in reincarnation, mm. uh, as many as most Indians do. Understanding how your past lives influence your present life. Right. And also concepts that deal with the flow of energy. In China, they call it feng shui. In India, it's called Vashtu. But I believe in that because I've seen how when I work with experts, and I was skeptical, I thought it was superstition. When I work with experts and they work with the flow of this in my office, sales go up in an inexplicable way. Right. So looking at money, I do believe that we have to in, in, explore the multiple dimensions. Today, everybody talks about investment. If you spoke about money beliefs 20 years ago, people would think you were crazy. But today we know it's real. And the third one, today some people will think it's superstition, and I did. I did just eight years ago, but today I believe it's real because of what I've seen when I've worked with spiritual teachers right. who work on the flow and the alignment of your spirit with money. It's so true. I, I so agree to this, you know. So, you know, we all have vision that we all, all of us have, you know, have our relations with money, you know, and it, it depends on what we have, been, what what we talk, what we listen to, and what we have been through or what we have experienced, right? And if you could answer it, you know, probably if you uh, if you can answer it in a short that, you know, uh, how how do you get out of it? And and, and I'm sure Mindali has a lot of programs, right. you know, which talks on it. So somebody because until and unless your money emotional cushion is not clear. No matter how hard you try, you know, everybody has this, as you rightly said, you know, a lot of time I had this, you know, long back when we make money and with the again, you know, it all goes away again. You again make money and again it goes away. But probably something, you know, probably our parents had that kind of an issue, or probably our, uh, you know, uncles or friends, right. somebody has it. And it just somewhere back of the mind, there's this, this belief, it just remains. And probably we're just tracking that. So Mind Valley has a lot of programs, a lot of, lot of, lot of you know, teachers out there who talks on it. Can you tell me one, if all of out here, because this is something which is very, very, very important. And because when you're talking about trading, it's very important all our students out here also right. understands that. So if there's one, one, one program that they have to listen to at Mind Valley when it comes to emotional education, can you just help them with the name? Absolutely. So... So, so if, if you are a Mind Valley member, so, so basically, for those of you who know what Mind Valley is, Mind Valley, when we go out, typically, we buy different programs. When I was going through my personal growth journey, I'd go and I'd buy a program on digital marketing, I'd buy a program on money. Uh, and these programs cost 500 to $1,000. On Mind Valley membership, what happens is that all of the programs, 50 different programs, and they're all world class with world class teachers. Um, it's 500 a year. And in India, we just launched India pricing. So it's 299 a year. You just go to mindvalley.com. Now, there are two programs in Mind Valley that you want to take. Now, our programs are designed to, as an experience, 20 minutes a day over, typically it's around three weeks. And the teachers, they build up your belief structure. They build up your, your they, they work on your, on your 
not just the physical, but the mind and the soul. Right. And over three weeks, typically, you become a new person. So the first program, if you're a Mind Valley member, the first program you want to do uh, is, and then this is available to our, to our Indian membership as well. Uh, so if you go there, you'll see there's an Indian membership. All our students are connected together. Is Money EQ by Ken Honda. Ken Honda is, is Jack, right. Japan's number one, number one personal growth teacher. He's written 53 books, and his program is Money EQ. Wow. Money EQ by Ken Honda. Then after you do that, you want to go to the spiritual level. And that's where you're going to go into a mystical program. It's called Unlimited Abundance by Christy Marie Sheldon. Wow. She is the spiritual teacher mm. who has helped me with the spirituality of money. That program becomes available uh, on Mind Valley membership. In you, you can buy it separately right now. It's three hundred dollars, but don't buy it. It's going to be included in Mind Valley membership in, um, in in about two months, one to two months. Okay. By Christy Marie. That's okay, so those two programs, Money EQ and Unlimited Abundance, are the ones that work on the emotional and the spiritual dimension of money. Right. Great. So, you know, one, one, uh, two more questions, Vashen. Okay, uh, so this is, you know, there are a lot of things which shapes our futures, which shapes our success. There is education, there is uh, ethics, there is morality, there is condition, there are so many things. But if you want to rate one thing, one big thing, which according to you is the most important, uh, you know, in order to, you know, make it big, or what decides or what shapes your future, one thing, if you get that right, uh, eventually everything would start falling in place. So what's that one big thing that's very important for one to get it right? The one thing, okay, the one thing that is most important is this. But I have to explain it as a story so you understand it. Yes, please. Many of you here may have heard of Professor Sri Kumar Rao. Sri Kumar Rao, uh, he's also of Indian origin. And he teaches in the world's best business schools. He lives in New York. He's taught at Kellogg University, Columbia, London Business School. These are the best, some of the best MBA programs in the world. And his, his classes are legendary. Why? Because he's taking Indian spirituality and translating it into American business. So he talks about the philosophy of uh, uh, um, Yogananda. Uh, he's a big fan uh, of, uh, of, of several other um, Indian spiritual uh, teachers. Mm. Um, and one of the things he told me once is that American MBA programs are missing something. They are missing consciousness, he said. So I asked him, what do you mean by missing consciousness? And he says, they teach you that the point of life is your business. That's not the point of your life. So true. The number one thing, he said, the number one thing is, are you growing? The most important thing is, are you growing? Boy. So he said, your business, it's not about your business. Your business is simply the number one vehicle for your personal growth. Likewise, your children are the number one vehicle for your personal growth. Your marriage is the vehicle for your personal growth. Your growth has to be number one. You must have clear goals, clear ideas of the person you want to evolve to be constantly. Life is about that growth. It's about that spiritual growth. Everything else is just a vehicle. If your business take, becomes a billion dollars, it doesn't matter. The question is, did you grow? If your business fails, it doesn't matter. The question is, did you grow? Did you grow? When you measure yourself only by one thing, how much am I growing? Wow. Your life will continue getting better and better, and you will take everything and everyone in that same direction. So that is the philosophy of Professor Sri Kumar Rao. Um, Amazing teacher. Wow, wow, so 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 true, uh, you know, and uh, it's, it's very important, as you rightly said, you know, or else it's very important to stop and ask yourself, am I growing? What you rightly said, am I growing? You know, and whatever I'm doing, it is it taking me to the next level? Okay, is it challenging me enough? Okay, or is most of the time what we do is we do things, we do things repeatedly, repeatedly, which we are comfortable doing it. We really hesitate to actually go out of the comfort zone, try something new, fail, try, and do all of that. We really hesitate to do, maybe we probably, you know, uh, hesitate to act, probably because of some fear, some discomfort, or some kind of worry. But it's very important that one keeps on trying, do something new, and make sure that one is growing. 
So true. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Vishen. So just few. We just have Vishen. Now this few rapid fire question. Okay. You just sure. have to probably. Uh, you know, there's just it's just a fun thing. You just have to answer it. Uh, probably in a one word or two words or probably in one sentence. Okay. Got it. So. What are the three major things that made Vision what he is today? Reading, mentoring, learning. Wow. If you have to name the top three gurus or mentors who, who helped you be wherever you are today, the top three gurus that you would love to name them? Paramahansa Yogananda, Jose Silva, Neil Donald Walsh. How did you bounce back with Shrin from 2020? Can you explain this in one sentence? Because 2020 was a year when everybody, everybody had a real tough time. But at the same time, yes, there were also people who have broken the records in 2020. But, you know, for a lot of, lot of businesses out there, there was a huge impact. So one thing, one, one thing that you did which helped you to bounce back from 2020 vision. Daily meditation focusing on my business. If, I repeat, if one has to redesign his life, what according to you, Vishen, where does it start from? One thing that they should start off from, if somebody wants to change their story, somebody wants to just redesign for their life, it's like, you know, I've been saying this, it always takes one moment, one decision for you to change everything for you, you know? So what is it that one thing that you think that they should do in order to redesign their lives? self-check to find out what aspect of your life is punctured. What is that aspect that's holding you back? According to you, why there is a need of human transformation? Because we are more than human. What according to you is the future of education? In, in collaboration with other great companies which are working to solve the same problem.